Hello my beautiful extended family. I'm um, Paul from paulchermack.com. Thanks for listening in. Uh, I just had a little friend Carly come visit. I'm here um, on acreage, beautiful acreage um, with a lot of chickens and a dog and a beautiful cat that's a bit paralyzed due to um, being bitten by a snake when she when she was he was just a baby. So sort of interesting to see how how the cat still manages to get around, sort of uh, struggling with walking a little bit, doesn't seem to bother him at all. Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, let everyone know something that was on my mind. I've got, um, <laughs> I might just move a little. I've got, uh, yeah, the thought in my head about it. You know, some people, some people struggle. I've been, you know, pretty public on Facebook for someone who started out as a very private, quiet, shy, insecure person. I've definitely put myself out there. And it's taken me uh, a lot, you know, learning to have courage and learning to build up my courage to do that. And um, going to the markets for 10 years every single Sunday pretty much um, definitely helped me to, to get more comfortable being around a lot of people um, and doing the work we did there with education around keeping our children healthy and around um, the importance of organics in our lives on so many levels. Organic food stops chemicals getting into ourselves, our children. It stops chemicals ending up um, spread across the land. Um, and it also um, reduces the profits of those massive companies that actually profit from making those chemicals that end up destroying our environment um, and harming ourselves and our children. So you know, there's three main big reasons there why, why doing everything possible to go organic is a good thing and that's why I'm, I'm pretty proud of what I've done for, for those uh, 12 years really all up that I've been promoting organic food but um, you know, about 10 years at the markets. <laughs> it's been a long, long journey and met a lot of really beautiful people and interesting people, a lot of characters. And along that road I've seen um, how some people have gotten a bit uh, confused or um, frustrated with me. I am pretty overly enthusiastic maybe for some people to handle um, and also um, I could be difficult to work with sometimes because of that enthusiasm and passion um, and I'm pretty dedicated and, and committed to, to the direction that I'm heading because I've had a lot of time to think about it. And uh, I'm going to read you all a little story I found on the toilet wall here at my friend's house. Yeah, so um, it's beautifully appropriate. <laughs> They've got it pinned on the wall in their bathroom, so I'll put it back afterwards. Um, yeah, the uh, you know just to give in a nutshell, really, what motivates me since I was a little child, I've just been always looking around, just looking. I was very contemplative and conscientious. Got it written on my report card, and um, and I'd just be watching. I was very quiet because I was very shy very insecure, very fragile, uh, lots of allergies and problems that were caused probably by unorganic food and not, my mum not knowing certain foods that were triggering my allergies and problems and health uh, issues and asthma. Asthma was pro quite likely, um, a lot of research shows could have been um, partly due to, to the uh, vaccination schedules as well, which are much worse today. So there's a lot higher risk of asthma due to vaccination as well now. Uh, in a lot of countries they don't have so much asthma and they don't vaccinate. It's another interesting one, I still have to do more research on the correlations there, but I've heard that come up a few times. Um, so, you know, what really motivates me? What's my agenda? Um, what's, uh, why do I do what I do? Uh, really, it's pretty simple. The main reason why I do what I do is all those years of contemplation since I was a little child. I could go into all the stories from my childhood of things I witnessed and, and looked at and thought, something's wrong with that. That's not quite right, but I, I couldn't put my finger on it. It was questions that were unanswered. And then finally, um, in my, um, uh, about 12 years ago, no, 15 years ago, sorry, about 15 years ago, um, was when I, you know, started to really ask, uh, started to actually uncover the, uh, I won't go into that whole story, but I, I will in a future video, that'll be a separate little video, but I started to uncover how, um, get answers to my questions, basically, of, of what was really going on and uh, why was there so much suffering and why were people being so nasty to each other? Why was there so much conflict? Not just war, but, but conflict, conflict and struggle. There was a lot of struggle in society that I saw and people struggling to make ends meet and struggle on so many different levels, struggles with their health. Um, and I suddenly started to get all the answers 15 years ago and I have been dedicatedly researching those answers and those, the solutions that were linked to those answers for those 15 years, uh, people you know, don't like when comes with the word fanatic, but I think I was almost fanatical about it. I was like a religious devotee, you know, <laughs> studying up my, my books, my Bibles, um, and just studying everything I could possibly find on what's causing human suffering and what can we do about it. Um, and I'm really comfortable now that after 15 years of what 
I don't know why it didn't drive me insane, to be quite frank, really. I don't, um, so many late nights and little sleep and, um, you know, trying to um, have a normal life. But I spent one year as a complete hermit that first year, uh, 15 years ago, that first year, I, I went part time with my work and uh, moved back in with my parents. Um, cut my, you know, I paid just some, um, uh, a little bit of board money, $80 a week, uh, living in my parents' home. Uh, which I didn't want to do, but I knew that that was the way I could devote my time to, to relearning everything. Because <laughs> everything that it seemed that I knew or thought I knew was, was false or a half-truth or a misrepresentation of the truth. And I felt very, very um, uh, let down. I felt very disappointed about the schooling system. I didn't blame my parents because I knew they were just a product of that same kind of system. They'd both gone to university. They were both highly intelligent, but they didn't know any of this stuff and they'd never taught me about any of these these solutions that I was suddenly uncovering from these beautiful people all throughout history, still, some still alive, many not, um, for, you know, who for thousands of years have been declaring a lot of these truths and a lot of these solutions. So um, so that's what I'm devoted to. I've, I've uncovered, the, my real passion was what causes suffering for our children because really once our children are ha happy and safe, parents are going to be happy and safe, families are going to be happy and safe. So if we really focus on making sure our children are happy and safe and have, have a, a, an awesome childhood where they feel completely loved by the, their parents, by their extended family, by their entire community, then we know we're on the right track. And then everything else will fall into place naturally, I believe. Traumatized children turn into traumatized adults and they, they, they end up being angry adults, vindictive adults, violent adults, um, jealous adults, um, angry adults, um, and uh, adults that end up accepting war and, and battle and, and, uh, and you know, um, other harmful negative ways of dealing with problems. Um, instead of finding loving and, and uh, constructive solutions, they seem to turn very easily to destructive solutions. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect and I get it right all the time either. I mean, I'm part of this system too. I'm a product of it as well, but I do my very best. And um, yeah, so what motivates me, what I'm totally motivated by and, and my agenda really in my life, for the rest of my life, is to um, uh, expose, and I have, I believe, exposed most of the causes of, of our children's suffering, and I, I've uncovered very valid solutions. I've uncovered such a broad range of solutions, I'm very comfortable with implementation of any of them. I don't have any one solution that I'm, I'm going to, like, I've got my favourites, definitely, but I, I also believe and understand that I can't force them on any on everyone, but I would present the solutions um, as a range of them and maybe as a transitional phase as we transition into these solutions because a lot of them would not be understood by most people because of our schooling and our education and our, our media and all the messages we get from the media and movies and everything else, you know, computer games. Um, our whole social structure is based on violence uh, where we need to move to a social structure that's, you know, violence and competition. We need to move to a structure that's based on cooperation and love and um, compassion and non-violence. Uh, or peace would be a better way to describe that. So, um, yeah, my, my agenda, so you all know, and if just to help understand how I tick and why I do this and why I'm doing these videos now, is I'm, I'm, I'm really dedicated to making sure our children have a beautiful opportunity to find their, their true purpose, their joy, and uh, whatever that may be in the moment, it can change moment to moment, day to day, but if our children are happy and they feel like they're living their purpose each day, um, whether it's um, building a sandcastle or, um, you know, discovering... Um, how photosynthesis works through some kind of experimentation or planting a seed and, and um, growing a seed or, um, or playing their favorite musical instrument because they'd like to be in, in the orchestra one day. Uh, you know, whatever it may be, becoming a builder, learning construction. Even from a young age, children can learn so much. Um, and uh, yeah, letting them just pursue that purpose with complete freedom, without any undue fear or, or um, any undue um, induced uh, or imposed suffering, no imposition of suffering upon them or any kind of uh, uh, blocks against them living their purpose and loving their life. So in that, uh, with that, there's a lot more to say because uh, I'm pretty passionate about this topic. But uh, I better leave it there because the video will be too long. And thank you for listening and, and thank you for um, uh, joining me on this journey. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to get involved with you. No matter, and even if we don't meet personally, I'm, I, I have many uh, friends who help with what we do and we and I help their projects they help our projects um, uh, who are all around the world and um, you can be anywhere in the world and still be involved um, so here's this um, beautiful little, little um, poem I guess um, it's not enough to have a dream unless you're willing to pursue it it's not enough to know what's right unless you're strong enough to do it it's not enough to join the crowd to be acknowledged and accepted 
You must be true to your ideals, even if you're excluded and rejected. It's not enough to learn the truth, unless you also learn to live it. It's not enough to reach for love, unless you care enough to give it. I just love that. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Love you all. Bye-bye.